Welcome to Plug Life Television. There has been a lot of talk in the news recently about electric cars being more expensive to run than petrol cars, but is there any truth in this? Let's crunch the numbers. For starters, the cost of charging an electric car is heavily dependent on how you charge it. Let's run through a number of scenarios, starting with 100% of charging sessions taking place at public rapid chargers, which is a highly unlikely scenario for most drivers. In January 2023, the average petrol price was 148.59 pence per litre, according to RAC Fuel Watch, while according to RAC Charge Watch, a kilowatt hour, or unit of electricity, from an electric vehicle rapid charger costs on average 70.32 pence in the UK at the moment, up sharply from nearer 37 pence just over a year ago. So, we know our fuel prices now, but how much fuel will each car use? A decent average efficiency across all electric cars today is 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour, while 45 miles per gallon is a generous average across all of the UK's petrol cars. And if anything is weighted in favour of petrol cars, because I've seen some very recent claims that the average UK fuel economy is under 40 miles per gallon. By converting gallons to litres and dividing the cost of petrol by the number of miles per litre, we find that the average petrol car costs 15.01 pence per mile to run today. Meanwhile, an electric car that's exclusively charged on rapid chargers, which is the most expensive way to run an electric car, works out at 20.09 pence per mile, 5.08 pence more expensive per mile than a petrol car. But that's not the full picture. About 90% of a typical electric car's charging is done at home. Electricity is expensive at the moment, but in the UK, Ofgem has capped the maximum home electricity tariff price at 34 pence per kilowatt hour. So, if you have a standard, flat rate tariff, you'll likely be paying this figure for your electricity. Assuming that 90% of charging is done at home on a flat rate tariff, and the remaining 10% is done out and about on public rapid chargers, the total cost per mile for an electric vehicle is 10.75 pence. This is 4.26 pence per mile cheaper than a petrol car. Can't charge at home? You may be able to. Solutions like the Nodum Charge Bridge, Trojan Energy Aeon Charge Point, and the Gully all allow you to charge your car at home from your own electricity supply, even if you don't have a driveway. Also, workplace and supermarket charge points may be similarly priced to home charging, such as the Pub Point charge points at Tesco supermarkets. But even that's not the full picture. Many electric cars are charged overnight on off peak electricity tariffs. This is where your electricity provider rewards you for using electricity when demand is low and renewable energy output is high, which means that wholesale electricity prices are lower and they pass the savings on to you. Charging your car overnight actually helps to avoid curtailment of renewables, which is when wind turbines are paid to switch off because there's too much electricity on the grid and too little demand for it. So, electric cars can actually be very useful for the grid if charged at the right time. One example of an off-peak tariff is Octopus Go, which at present is 12 pence per kilowatt hour overnight. See the link below this video for my referral code should you be interested in joining them. Assuming that 90% of charging is done at home using an off-peak tariff, and the rest is done on public rapid chargers, then this works out at 5.09 pence per mile, just shy of 10 pence per mile cheaper than a petrol car. But even that's not the full picture. If you have solar panels, charging your car can be even cheaper. Smart home charge points can measure the output of your solar panels and the electricity demand of your house, and put the difference into your car without importing electricity from the grid. By trickle charging your car off of sunshine like this, and factoring in the cost of solar panels, you're effectively charging your car at 5.7 pence per kilowatt hour. That said, you could argue that solar panels give you free electricity, especially if you've moved into a house that already has solar panels. Plus, solar panels will greatly reduce the running costs of your home too. So let's assume that out of the 90% of charging that we do at home, half of it comes from your solar panels and half from off-peak electricity. This works out at 4.28 pence per mile, or nearly 11 pence cheaper than a petrol car. If you count your solar electricity as free, then the cost of charging your car is 3.55 pence per mile. So, what do annual fuel costs look like? If you do 8,000 miles per year, then charging exclusively on public rapid chargers works out £406 more expensive than running a petrol car. But if you only ever charge at home on a standard flat rate electricity tariff, you save £423.75 versus running a petrol car. Note as well that there are many rapid chargers across the country that have a cost that is closer to that of a flat rate home electricity tariff, such as many of Charged Place Scotland's rapid chargers, 
and the pod point rapid chargers found at some Lidl and Tesco supermarkets. So even if you're fully reliant on rapid chargers, with no ability to charge at home, the workplace or on slower AC charge points near your home or places you regularly visit, then an electric car could still work out cheaper than a petrol one, even if you can't charge at home. If you do most of your charging on an off-peak electricity tariff, you could save almost £800 per year in fuel costs versus a petrol car, with that figure being closer to £860 if you have solar panels, and nearly £920 if you count your solar panels as giving you free electricity. So that was for 8,000 miles a year, but the more miles you drive in a year, the bigger your savings will be by switching to electric. If you do 10,000 miles per year, you could save between 425 and 1,072 pounds if you can charge at home, or on similarly priced workplace or public charge points. The savings increased to between 638 pounds and 1,608 pounds when driving 15,000 miles per year, and people driving 20,000 miles per year can save between 851 and 2,145 pounds versus petrol. Note that these figures don't even consider the lower maintenance cost of electric cars. Electric motors are mechanically much simpler and more reliable than petrol engines, and are also used to help slow the car down under braking. So there's much less to go wrong with them, brake wear is vastly reduced so you don't need as many brake pads, and many dealers have cheaper servicing costs for their electric models than for their petrol or diesel ones. That's all well and good, but what if you drive a diesel? Does a diesel engine's generally higher fuel economy make them cheaper to run than EVs? Well, I've rerun the figures for diesel on this chart here, based on the latest national average diesel price from RAC Fuel Watch, and genuine real-world MPG figures from the most frugal diesel cars tested by Wattcar. The figures are broadly in line with the petrol scenario. Electric vehicles are by far cheaper to charge than a diesel vehicle is to refill unless you exclusively use more expensive rapid chargers and never charge at home, work, supermarkets and so on. Once again, these figures exclude the much cheaper maintenance costs of electric cars, which don't have to worry about AdBlue or the even higher servicing costs of diesel vehicles. Some people may argue that their petrol or diesel car is very small and much more efficient than the examples given here, but it isn't scientific to compare the biggest electric cars on the road with an itsy-bitsy, teeny-weeny, city runabout machine that runs on petrol or diesel. It's important to compare apples with apples. A smaller electric car will generally be more efficient too, when driven in the same manner as its petrol or diesel equivalent. And finally, remember, electricity prices will come down. Or at least should, given the cheap cost of renewables. Wholesale gas prices, combined with a wholesale electricity market that was not designed for this extreme scenario that we're in just now, are keeping prices artificially high, as I've alluded to in a previous episode. In the next episode of Plug Life Television, I shall explain how electricity prices could and should be slashed without any taxpayer subsidies whatsoever, and how the UK government could easily reduce electricity bills right back to what they were towards the beginning of 2021.